Welcome to today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light. Sun, Salt, and Light, S-O-N, knowing and growing in your daily relationship with Jesus Christ, but also being the salt and the light in your marriage, in your family, at your place of work, at your church, and even in the community you're in. I'm Pastor Michael Petit. This is a radio ministry of our church, Calvary Chapel Divine, here in Divine, Texas. We are so glad that you joined us for today's broadcast. We are a Calvary Chapel, so we simply teach the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We believe that God uses His Word to transform, restore, and to change lives one verse at a time. If you're visiting our area, you'd like to get information about our church or church service times, maybe even track down some of the other teachings that we have available through podcasts, whether it's through Audible or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can do all of that at our church website at calvarydivine.org. That's calvarydivine.org. Okay, this is a a topical study. This is not our normal verse-by-verse study uh, that we're doing. We've taken a break from the book of Ephesians. Um, to do this because I want to make sure those of you that are being baptized next week that you understand what's going to be happening Um, and and also um, you know some of us need to be able to explain it if we're a follower of Christ and we can't explain what baptism is we need to know we shared that verse at the very beginning of Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 through 20 and Jesus came and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even to the end of the age amen let's pray Father God, we thank you so much for today. We do ask that you be with us as we dive into this topical study. Uh, Lord, we, we pray. I, I pray that this whole hall would be filled next week. That we wouldn't have seats. That we would have to go grab seats from the other side of the, the VFW. Lord, our responsibility, we've been commanded to make disciples. We've been commanded to baptize We've been commanded to teach the Word. And I pray that we would do that individually and and as a church. Lord, we know that there are some that that need healing. As we talk about Pastor Ron, we ask, Lord, that you be with him. Uh, Be with Robert as well. We're asking, Lord, for your hand to be over their lives. If it is your will, Lord, to heal them both. I pray for Yanni and Loy. Uh, they're both uh, spouses and uh, just the, the, the ups and downs of having somebody who's sick, Lord, that you would strengthen them, bring peace to their hearts, comfort them in times of, of when they're, they're seeing their husbands struggle with physical pain, with uh, the, the, just trying to keep food down, just all the things that happen with that, Lord. We ask that you be with them and the family. And Lord, we pray, we, we know that there are other things that you know that are on our hearts and, and, um, and who's on our hearts. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you would hear those prayers as they cry out, as they're waiting for things to happen over this week, and just pray for good news, Lord. We also pray for this church. We thank you, Lord, that we have this building, that we can come and worship you, that we can come and be in your word. We pray for our marriages. I pray for our, 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 our small businesses, Lord. I, I thank you, Lord, as we, you know, one of the things that's awesome to see is that, that there are so many uh, businesses that are being maintained in this community. And I pray for those that are within this church, Lord, that you would just have your hand over those and continue to provide for the families that they provide for. We also pray for our widows. Uh, we ask, Lord, that whatever their need is, Lord, that you would fulfill that and, and, and bless that, Lord, that you would take care of the, the, the basics and, and beyond, Lord. And we pray, Lord, we're, uh, for our families. We pray for our kids. We ask, Lord, that you would just continue to move in their lives. And, and we ask, Lord, that you would move in this community, that we would see more people, maybe that have drifted away from God, come back to the fellowship of, of, of church and and, and some that have never even walked in a church, that they would walk in a church, Lord. Speak to the hearts of this community. Work in their hearts, Lord. Even the people within this building. 
uh, that walk through these doors that, that come to play bingo, come to be in the bar, but they have no relationship with you, Lord. We pray that you would touch their hearts, that you would move in a way that, they, that, that you would be so real in their life that they would choose to follow you. And we ask these things in, in Jesus' wonderful name. We say that and we thank you for this day. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So we see in Matthew 28, it talks about in verse 18 um, and 19, it goes into, we see Jesus receiving the authority, but we also see Jesus giving us a command. He tells us to make disciples. So the first thing we know is we cannot baptize anybody unless they're a disciple of Christ. They have to be a follower of Jesus, right? And that's where it comes in where we, you know, we, we know the verse very well, well in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, that if you confess with your mouth uh, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. From the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then we see that we are to baptize them. And, and, and whose name are we to baptize them in? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the first thing we do is before we baptize you, we ask if you are a follower of Christ. Have you confessed your sins? Have you given your heart to Christ? And then we will immerse you. And we will baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And then you go under. Now will we hold people under longer? No, we don't do that. I know that some of y'all probably need to stay under a little longer, right? I know they, they needed two people to hold me down. Um, but the reality of it is, is we, we go from discipleship to baptism. And then from baptism is teaching the Word. All of these things are what we're supposed to be doing. Uh, as, as believers, we are, we are commanded to do these things. But, I, you know, I, I feel like a lot of times we don't do that. You know, are, are, are you required to be baptized? That's always the question that pastors will get. We dealt with one of the most popular questions this past weekend, or this past Wednesday night. Can you drink? Can you get high? Can you do mushrooms? Right? We dealt with that. And, and the reality of it is, is like when, when God puts a conviction on your heart, no, you can't. You just can't. And, and, and so when it comes to baptism, this is the other question we get. Do I have to be baptized? You don't. You don't. Because the thief on the cross was not baptized. We look at Luke chapter 23. When you look down at, at, um, at verse 41, it says, um, And we indeed unjustly, for we receive the due rewards of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. So one thing we know for a fact is that Jesus didn't stop everything, come down from the cross and go, somebody get me some water because I have to get him off the cross and I have to baptize him. Right? So we know that you're not required to be baptized. But what did Jesus think it was so important to be baptized? Because you're identifying with Him in the baptism. Jesus was baptized. Before He started His earthly ministry, He was baptized. In Mark chapter 1, verses 9-11, through 11, it says, It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, He saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon Him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven, You are My beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Now we see that, that John's baptism was one of forgiveness. And did, did Jesus have sins that he needed to be forgiven of? No. He was sinless. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, For our sake he made him to be, no, uh, to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In those verses, you also see the Trinity represented as you see the Son there as he's being baptized and then the spirit descending upon him like a dove and then the, the, the God the Father speaks, you are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. 
And in John chapter 1, verse 29, it says, The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus and the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is in every aspect has been tempted as we are. Yet without sin, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. We have a high priest. We have a high priest that was baptized, who sympathized with us, who was sinless, who didn't need to be baptized. But he did it because he was being obedient to the Father. He did it because he was fulfilling Scripture. Jesus didn't need to repent. But yet he did it. Because John tries to stop him from being baptized. He's like, I'm supposed to baptize you. Or you're supposed to baptize me. And in Matthew chapter 3, verse 14, then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan of John to be baptized. And John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? In 1 John chapter 3, verse 5, he says, You now then, uh, you know that he appeared in order to take away the sins, and in him there is no sin. So when we look at baptism, it's to associate, he's associating with the sinner, even though he's not guilty. So it's when Jesus is baptized, it's not for his, his own salvation, but ours. It's not for his own guilt, but ours. It's not because he feared the wrath to come, but to save us from it. So when we read those verses in, in Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, we see that he was baptized because he was fulfilling Scripture. He was being obedient to the Father. It was an act of submission. He was actually affirming his deity and starting his public ministry. Fully God, fully man, being obedient to the Father. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 11, it says, Who though he was in the form of God did not count it equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of man and being found in the human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. We see that Jesus took the form of a servant and he was obedient to the Father and He humbled Himself. He humbled Himself by being obedient. He was baptized. It's a, it's a wonderful picture that when, when Jesus is being baptized, it's a, it's a picture that He's being baptized just as the prostitute was baptized. Or just as the, the tax collector was baptized. Even though He didn't need to be. He was sinless. He's identifying so when you get baptized, you're identifying with Christ. It's a beautiful picture. And, and, and as you see, the, uh, the baptism itself is, is a picture of uh, the future baptism on the cross. The baptism that Jesus stood for is a profound picture of, of gospel message that He would preach and fulfill. It's a picture of His death and the sacrificial atonement for sin. And the resurrection from the dead. And the Apostle Paul put it this way. In Romans chapter 6 verses 3 and 4. Or do you not know that as many of us uh, were baptized into Christ. Were baptized into his death. Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so we should also walk in the newness of life. And water baptism is simply an open and outward symbol of your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that word baptism is to immerse. And so that's why we believe in full immersion. We, 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 we dunk you, so to say. We don't do the sprinkles of the, of the water. How many of y'all were baptized as kids? Right? I was as well. Didn't mean anything. When I'm talking about kids, I'm talking about babies. Right? Or you get baptized, you, you know, the guy comes around and he 
throws the water on you. That's not baptism. Baptism, the word in the Greek, means immersion. That's why we, we, we baptize people. Full immersion. And so, one of the things that we, we, we believe is in, in doing a full immersion baptism. But you know what? That's, it, it is done as a public proclamation of their salvation. So when, we, when we're baptized, we're saying we belong to Jesus. And you'll hear it say it's an, an inward sign of an outward change. So you have to be a disciple, right? A follower of Christ. But now you're letting everybody know, your family, your friends, your church, I belong to Jesus. And I'm identifying with Christ through baptism. And see, baptism is a, is a wonderful testimony because it shows a new direction and desire of your life. In Psalm 16, 8, it says, I have set the Lord always before me because He is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. David's speaking here and he's speaking about his personal relationship and it gives him the greatest joy. But we have a new desire, a new direction in our, in our life. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, it says, Set your mind on the things that are above, not on the things on the earth. Our water baptism is a wonderful testimony that our, our, our focus is no longer on the things of the earth anymore. It's focused on Christ. We have total confidence on God. As you go through things in life, when you, when you think back to your water baptism, I can remember the stress of my water baptism. I almost walked out. I was, man, there was a battle going on that day. And, and Pastor Louie told me, he goes, well, if you, if you want to uh, serve in sound and help out with radio, I, I would like for you to be baptized. And I was like, okay. Well, let me tell you, that was probably one of the most stressful weeks I had in my life in a long time. And the battle that happened that day. Um, but you know what? You're going to continue to have battles. You're going to continue to go through ups and downs. I've told you all this many a times that life kicks. And what I mean by that, if you've ever been kicked by a horse or by an animal, it hurts. It knocks the breath out of you. Cracks some ribs. There's some suffering that happens. And that's what life does. But when you have confidence in God... It's a, it's a reminder. I, I mean, Paul goes through this whole list of things that he has gone through. And then at the very end of it, he says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Through all these... Jail, when I was in jail, when I was, in the, when I was thrown, shipwrecked a number of times, all these different things. It was Christ who strengthened me. It's our salvation. That we are His disciples. We're His children. We're His heirs. We're, we're ambassadors of God. I can remember to the time when I was baptized. I can remember the joy that it was that day. And I have confidence in God because of that. Water baptism is also... A testimony to the boldness to share and proclaim our faith. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 11 through 13, we just went over this last week. And according to the eternal purposes which He accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in Him. Therefore, I ask that you do not lose heart at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. We have boldness. We, we should be proclaiming our faith to people. If you're being baptized next week, you should be inviting people. If you've been baptized, you should be inviting people. You should still be proclaiming your faith. You never know when somebody shows up that they're going to be... Man, we have had... I have seen it time and time again. When a baptism happens, there'll be somebody who gives their heart to Christ and, and is baptized the same day. And that's a beautiful picture. 
It really is. But there should be boldness in the way that we share, share our faith. He, he gives you three things there. Boldness, access, confidence. You should have boldness, access, and confidence through faith in Him. To share your faith. Boldness. Kirk today had boldness. He's never done announcements, ever. And today he, we were like, hey Kirk, I need you to do announcements. He just did them. It's that, it, it just comes down. It's, it's little simple steps of faith. Little simple steps of faith. You know, when we, when we started doing sound, we had no clue what, what was. I mean, we've got all this stuff now, and it's like, and we got curtains, and, you know, all that stuff has happened. But that's, those are steps of faith. And people are just saying, hey, let's try this. Let's do this. Let's see if we can get this working. Those are steps of faith. We step out in boldness, but we also should be proclaiming our faith. And that same boldness that we have in these four walls, they need to happen outside these four walls. Okay? It's important. It's important for us to do that. It's, it, you're going to go through tribulations. Every one of you. Every one of you. You're not getting out of that. You're going to go through a time of suffering. But where is your boldness and the access and the confidence going to come from if you're not walking right with God? Think about your baptism, where you were at then and where you were at now. Has things changed? Are you drifting further away from God? Because maybe we need to dunk you again. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we, I mean, people can be baptized three, four, five times. If Man, people walk away. It happens. But if you think back to that time when you gave your, your, your heart to Christ and you were baptized, where are you at now? That's a serious assessment that each of us needs to do as, as a follower of Christ. If we're drifting away, we, we're, we're drifting away from His Word. We're drifting away from, from fellowship. We're drifting away from prayer. Man, you need to do a heart check. Because you know what will happen is suffering and tribulations and trials will pull you away from God. And that's what the enemy wants to do. But you have access and you have boldness and you have confidence and faith through Him. Another thing about water baptism, the testimony that we uh, that I that I love about it is that it shows that you're casting away sinful habits. In Colossians chapter three, verses eight through ten, it says, "But you yourselves are not to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put." off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. And as you, you your, your part of your baptism is, is, is you've confessed your sins. You're, you're a new creation in Christ. You're not the same person. Right? And, and you're casting off those sinful habits. We talked about it this past week. Like how close to the line of sin do you want to get? Right? We talked about the different meals that we would eat. And I think quartz was ravioli. Kurtz was steak and potatoes. Micah's was pizza and lasagna. Miss Heather's was fried green tomatoes. And the thing is, is like how close to the line of sin do you want to go? Right? Because I told him, I said, just think about having that big plate there. Your favorite food. Think about your favorite food and somebody was like, boom, it's right in front of you. And you go to dip in and there's a hair in it. See, what you want to do when you try to play that thing about sinful habits and how close I can get to the line of sin uh, am I going to eat around the hair? I'm not. Because the plate's defiled. I don't even need to touch the plate. 
it's time to put the fork down. Right? But that's what happens as we try when we're, when we're messing around with sinful habits. We're trying to see how close to the line can I get. And, and you need to stop doing that. Because a, a sinful habit or, or trying to see how, where is that gray area. That's like having a hair on your plate. The whole plate's ruined. So what's, what's, there's no gray area. The plate's got to go, right? You need to walk away from that sinful habit. And part of you uh, being baptized is that you are a new creation in Christ. That, that God is working on those things with you. That you're putting off the anger and the wrath and the malice and the blasphemy and the filthy language. You're not lying to one another. The old man or woman is dead. You're not trying to dig those things back up again. Right? So water baptism for us is a, a, is a wonderful testimony. It's also uh, an example of somebody growing in their faith and their eyes are firmly fixed on Jesus. Their eyes are firmly fixed on Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before us, he and him uh, before him he endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It's like our our one of the things that we see, and, and this was the beauty of of when somebody decides to be baptized. God's word has been penetrating and working in their heart. And even if they're in a sinful habit or something's going on, God is moving and working and moving them to a place to where they go, man, I have to be baptized. I have to be baptized. God puts it on the heart of that person. And what you see is that somebody's eyes are fixed on the author and the perfecter of their faith, Jesus Christ. They have joy. Well, that concludes today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light Radio. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to submit a prayer request or get in contact with us to find out service times, you can do all of that at our website, uh, as well as get uh, our podcast at Spotify, Audible, TuneIn Radio, pretty much wherever you can find a podcast. Uh, you, you can just type in Sun, Salt, and Light, and you'll find it. 